Arsenal pick up the 3-0 win against Bournemouth, but Man City are hot on our heels. Uh, they're currently 4-1 up against Wolves. I am running with the assumption that they will go on and win that game. Wolves did just pull one back, and then Haaland scored his fourth goal about a minute later. So, TV off and focus on the Arsenal game. Uh, the, it was a very good game. Ultimately, I, I really enjoyed that game. You know, the first half, we created a lot. We were, we were playing some of the best football uh, I've seen from us this season, which is saying a lot because we played a lot of very good football, but we weren't putting the ball in the back of the net. And then you start thinking, God, it's going to be another one of those games. Uh, and it is that type of game that has cost us this season where we've just not put the ball away when we needed to. Obviously, it didn't end up like that today. Uh, by the way, if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. We're on the way to 10,200 subscribers. And if you could like the video as well, just scroll down, drop it a like. It does massively help me out. But let's talk about the game. Let's talk about some of the individuals that I really enjoyed their performances in that game. We'll talk about some refereeing decisions as well. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about the City game or the first hour of the City game because God knows what will happen. I mean, uh, at this point, if it ends 4-1 then it's nothing lost, nothing gained in terms of goal difference, but they could score a lot more. Wolves are wide open. Um, but let's get into the game. Let's get into the game. I mean, look, yeah, you can see here, for, for the vast majority of the game, we were absolutely dominant. 56% possession, but you know, nearly 4 XG, limited Bournemouth to very, very little. Uh, 24 shots. You know, it, it was really dominant. It was very, very dominant. But... It took us up until the 45th minute to get that opening goal. Uh, we got it from a penalty. Now, you know, was it a penalty? Was it a penalty? It's one of those where once it's given, the VAR cannot overturn it, right? Once it's given, I'm not expecting VAR to go ahead and overturn that because there is contact. Uh, the keeper has come out. He's not got the ball. So he's made contact with Havertz. Does Havertz play for it? Yeah. Absolutely, he does. He leaves his leg there. And in reality, I don't think, being completely honest, I don't think that should be given as a foul. If David Coote had not given the penalty, I would not be sat here now demanding that that is a penalty. Because as much as Havertz has done well to win the penalty, that's exactly what he's done. He has won the penalty. Um, and, you know, if that had gone against us, I'd have been absolutely fuming. So I do kind of feel for Bournemouth fans in that sense that at that point they had, you know, whilst they'd been under a lot of pressure, they had kept it to nil-nil. Um, and, and and that changed the game, giving us that goal before half time. Excellently converted penalty by Bakayo Saka. But if we are going to go down the route of talking about referees, you then have to talk about the fact that Bakayo Saka took that penalty with blood pouring down his leg from where he had been uh, fouled by Ryan Christie earlier in the half. And for me, that's a red card. It's very, very similar to the red card that we saw Fabio Vieira get earlier this season. And that was an example where Arsenal fans did not complain at all about Fabio Vieira getting sent off for that, even though it wasn't massively dangerous because he didn't put any force through it, the Fabio Vieira one. It was clumsy. He caught the player high. Uh, when the ball was bouncing. And we all said, fair enough, that's a red card. So then it is frustrating when, you know, we do our part in terms of respecting decisions and being fair and not complaining, but it's not reciprocated by the same decisions being given when it's a foul on our player. Um, and, you know, Bakaya Saka was caught just below his knee with a really poor challenge. And it wasn't even a booking. And, and, and the annoying thing is that's not the first time. You know, in fact, in the last four games, there have now been three fairly clear-cut red cards. Kilman in the Wolves game on Kai Havertz. Um, Jackson on Tommy Asu in the Chelsea game. And now this one. Uh, and in fact, of all three of those challenges, there have been a grand total of one yellow card handed out. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Um, and for that reason, my sympathy wanes a little bit for the penalty decision. Because ultimately, Havertz has won the penalty and it shouldn't get overturned by VAR, or it's never going to get overturned by VAR after that. Then we go into the second half, and, you know, I was still worrying a little bit that we ha we would have a, you know, one of those second halves that we start <coughs> started seeing, sorry, <coughs> sorry, where we've struggled to get it going in the second half, uh, but we did. We, we played well in the second half, I thought. Not, not quite as well as the first half, uh, but we got it going. And then, like I said in the preview, 
to those of you that watched the preview, I said I would start Leandro Trossard. And, and the reason I would start Leandro Trossard was because chances would fall to him in the box. And if I back anyone in the team to put it away, it's Leandro Trossard. And lo and behold, that exact thing happened. Um, you know, Declan Rice did well on the ball. It fell to Trossard and he buried it. Um, and, you know, when you look at the cameo that Martinelli made again, he just doesn't seem to have that confidence. And so it was the correct decision to start Leandro Trossard and it paid off with the second goal. Then Bournemouth go ahead and pull one back. And again, you know, if for me, at the time, I really, from where I was sat, I thought that was a foul on David Raya. But in, in real time, I thought it was a foul on David Raya. And I was surprised that David Coote actually allowed the play to continue for as long as he did before then giving a foul. It's not like offside where you're meant to allow the game to continue and then put the flag up. Um, if the ball's gone out or gone in or whatever. So I was surprised that he didn't just give the foul. Like He let it play on, he let it bounce off the bar. Then he gave it, um, and I wasn't surprised that he gave the foul. Looking back, I think it's very soft. I actually think a lot more of the contact on Raya is made by Gabriel than Solanke. You know, Solanke really doesn't touch him very much. And it's another one of those ones where if it had gone against us, I'd have been unhappy. If that had gone against us, I'd have been making videos about it. I'd have been raging. So at that point, you're going, okay, well, you know, after the potential red card for Ryan Christie for the foul on Saka, Bournemouth now have had two decisions go against them. Uh, and pretty poor decisions, in my opinion. But that was it. The game carried on. And uh, eventually, <laughs> eventually, Ryan Christie got booked in the 95th minute. At that point, he should have been on about four bookings and a straight red. Um, and then Declan Rice wrapped it up. Uh, wonderful goal, actually. Really nice assist from Gabriel Jesus. And uh, and a good finish from Declan Rice. Obviously, Declan Rice could have scored earlier in the game. Had a really good opportunity. Put it just wide. Um, and, and that was it. And, and I thought Jesus' cameo actually was quite good. But in terms of the players, the individual players, Declan Rice... Rightly awarded man of the match. Rightly has the highest rating. Thought he was absolutely fantastic today. Really just all over the pitch. And I, and I think he's a lot... I, I think he's a lot more impactful when he is given that freedom uh, to, to go forward with, to, with Thomas Partey sat behind him. So really good performance from him. Uh, I thought Raya, you know, other, the, other than the, the goal that they scored where I thought he could have been a bit stronger, was decent. Ben White was very good. Dealt with Justin Clivert. Saliba was sensational today. Monstrous performance from William Saliba. Uh, could have scored a goal at one point when he cut back onto his left. Oh, what a goal that would have been. Um, but but defensively, um, he was, yeah, a, an absolute monster. That one sort of later in the second half where he got back, um, won the ball, won it again, carried it out. I, I just, he's, he's, he is unbelievable. Gabriel. Um, scored an absolute worldy, absolute worldy, and one of those where you're like, there should be an asterisk in the offside law that if a goal is that good, it just gets allowed to count, especially if it's a centre back that scores it. Gabriel, G Gabriel will never score a better goal than that, never. And I had the perfect view of it as well. I was on the halfway line, and looking that way like into the corner that it went in. I was like right behind the angle of the shot. And I thought it was Gabriel Jesus at first. It was that good a strike. I thought it was Gabriel Jesus at first. Um, but he did have a couple of bozo moments. You know, he uh, when he's running back towards our own goal in possession of the ball and there's, a, and there's a, an opposition player right on his back, I do start panicking because he starts doing those things where he starts doing kind of step overs and pretending he's going to clear it out and then... But I feel like he confuses himself far more than he actually confuses uh, the the opponent when he does that. So, yeah, nearly gifted Solanke a goal. Got away with it, though. Uh, Tommy Asso, I thought, was solid. 1v1 duels against Semenyo. Very, very good. Uh, no complaints there. You know, he, he's beginning to find his feet again going forwards as well, which is good to see. Erdegaard was balling out in the first half once again. Um, silky, silky. And what I'm enjoying at the moment is that quite often now we're seeing Erdegaard move out towards the left-hand side. And he's really impactful over in this kind of space here. But what it also does is it means 
and I think the part of the reason that we're happy for this to happen now is because when the ball comes back to Thomas Partey in here, he's got the quality to fire it straight out to Saka. We don't need Erdegaard in this space to kind of move the ball between whether it was Rice or Jorginho. Like, it's getting out to Saka so quickly now. And I, I just really like the way that that's working. Partey himself, I thought, had a very good game. Uh, once again, you know, he, he has been very good since he's come back in, to be quite honest. The midfield looks so much better as this three. Um, Trossard, like I said, clinical with his finish. Had an all-round very good game, I thought. I thought it was a really good game from Trossard. Um, Saka, again, very good game. Very composed, calm penalty. Um, you know, maybe could have scored another, but from, from the Havertz uh, layoff. But good game. And then Havertz. Do you know what? With Kai Havertz now, it's just become normal for him to be putting in top performances. Like, when he first started putting in top performances, I, being completely honest, I was still kind of fearful that this was a false dawn, you know, maybe a little bit of a purple patch. And, you know, not that I listened to them, but you had Chelsea fans saying, oh, this is just what Kai Havertz does in March. Uh, the performances are just getting better and better. And it's just become normal now that, that he puts in excellent performances. Uh, won the penalty, which again, but you might not like the fact that it's a penalty. I mean, you will if you're an Arsenal fan. But he's won that. That's that's that is a skill to do that. Um, set up Saka, who should have scored. Um, had his own shot that was close to going in. Uh, just a, just a brilliant performance from him. So, and I'm buzzing for him for that as well. Absolutely buzzing for him. So look, ultimately, a very good performance, a very good result. But go ahead and look at the table. Um, we are now only going to be a point ahead of Man City. Um, I think as it stands, they're three goals up. So the goal difference gap remains at seven. Um, and it goes on. We go to Old Trafford next. They play against Fulham next. And we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's Being honest, they don't look like they're going to drop points. Man City do not look like they're going to drop points. They're dominant at the moment, you know. They've cruised past Wolves, absolutely cruised past Wolves. Haaland's got four. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, within that game, I still think it was ridiculous, the first penalty that Man City got, never a penalty. Um, Craig Pawson, by the way, has absolutely bottled it by, he doesn't give the penalty, rightly so. City players all crowd him and scream in his face, and then he gives the penalty, um, which was just ridiculous. And... This is one of those ones where it's City, it's only ever City that seem to get those ones where it's, you go, well, you never normally see that given, you know? Um, when Rodri got pulled down, pulled down earlier in the season by Hoyland, it was just a nothing penalty. And VAR got involved and gave that one. This one, you see it all the time. A player takes a shot, it goes miles wide or miles over. There's a collision with a defender in the follow through. It's not a penalty. Um, but realistically, even without it, I mean, look at them. They're, they're, they're demolishing them. They would have comfortably won the game anyway, I expect, without that penalty being given. But it, it was just frustrating for it to happen that early in the game. Um, but they're probably going to go and win. And so there you go. There's the table. We will be one point ahead. City will have a game in hand. What I think is really impressive, though, is the fact that we're just still going. You know, our goal difference is at plus 50. We've scored more goals this season than ever before. Um, you know, we've won 26 games. That's the same number of games that the Invincibles won, I think. Would they, did they win 28 and draw 12? Or did they win 26 and draw 14? Maybe I'm getting that wrong. Maybe they won 20... No, maybe they won 28 and drew 12. Either way, you know, 26 wins is damn impressive. And hopefully that ends on 28. Hopefully we go into the last game of the season uh, with it all on the line because you never know what can happen on the final day of the season. Uh, but time will tell. Time will tell. All we can do is pray. Uh, but I, I appreciate you watching the video. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Remember, I will be live on TIFO for the Liverpool versus Tottenham watch along 4.30 tomorrow. The link to that is in my bio. If you're new to TIFO, it's a brand new free uh, streaming platform for football watch alongs. Brilliant platform. Uh, the chat gets really engaged. I love it. Um, Use the code Rory, R-O-R-Y, full caps, if you are new to it. So link to that's in the description. Uh, if you could like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will catch you for a normal live stream on here, 6.30, Monday night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.